Hi guys, I'm James Hamilton from Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, and this is our monthly look at some of the new and interesting innovations in the woodworking world. This time we'll focus on workshop mobility. So we'll take a look at a mobile base that's made to roll over what other bases can't. We'll have a look at another mobile base that's amazingly versatile. We'll look at a set of flip-up casters for making things mobile on a budget, and we'll have a new way to move plywood around without straining your back. For our bargain of the month, we've got a laser gun. That's right, you heard me. We have a lot to cover and we'll be moving quickly, so if you want to learn more about anything you see or read some more independent reviews, please use the links below this video. If you're on YouTube, just click where you see Show More. Using those links helps us out a little bit too, so thanks for that. Let's get started. I was really surprised when I first saw this mobile base. It's one of those things you look at and you say, why aren't all mobile bases like this? What I'm referring to are the big 5-inch casters. Most base wheels are only about half that size, and they can't roll over much of anything. But with these big, high-quality urethane casters, I can roll over mats, wood shavings, even cords if I'm too lazy to bend over and pick them up. I'm pretty sure I can roll over my foot, but I won't because even without a machine on it, the base alone weighs quite a bit, like all mobile bases should. Yet it was surprisingly easy to assemble, which most mobile bases aren't. I did find it a little bit fiddly to adjust. The rails fit into their slots tightly and I had to use a mallet to persuade them to move from one hole to the next, but once you get it adjusted you're never going to mess with it again, so that's no big deal. As it comes, the base will stretch from 18 to 28 inches in both length and width, and you can order extensions that will give you up to 36 inches of capacity in either direction. I worried that those rails might be a little lightweight for supporting a machine, but the base is rated to hold up to 800 pounds. Of course, that's assuming you can get something that weighs 800 pounds up on top of it. Be sure to lift with your legs, not your back on that one. As you can see, it has no problem at all with my molding machine. The wheels lock in place when you don't want the mobile base to be mobile, but because the weight remains on the swivel casters, you can still wiggle the machine a little bit even when it's locked down. So that's something to consider if you're going to put something on it that absolutely must be still, like a workbench. But for just about any shop machine, this is a fantastic mobile base. I wish all mobile bases were all-terrain. I'll put a link to it in the notes below this video. There's heavy-duty mobile bases, and there's heavy-duty mobile bases. This one is the latter. Seriously, this thing is one big chunk of steel. It'll take, and I kid you not here, up to 1,500 pounds. That means you could theoretically load it up with your table saw, your band saw, your jointer, your planer, six pack of cold ones, and your mother-in-law for a trip to Golden Corral. But I wouldn't recommend any of that. What I do recommend is any tool, machine, or cabinet with a footprint that's as small as 20 and 3 quarter by 23 and 3 quarter, or as large as 28 by 33 and a half. You can also purchase a set of 36 inch rails and trade them for a pair of your shorter rails which gives you up to 44 inches of width. And we're just getting started. This is what makes this mobile base so awesome. They offer a set of couplers that you can use to connect rails end to end. You could theoretically use two pairs of 36 inch rails and a set of the couplers to make this base hold a six foot by six foot, 1500 pound monster machine. If you could get something like that in your shop. What's more realistic is that you might do what I plan on doing. I'm going to combine two sets of the 36 inch rails with a set of the shorter rails that came with my base and stretch it to support the five foot base on this workbench. Then I'm going to get another one of the bases and another option that they offer, which is a T extension, which I'll put under my table saw to support it and the legs on my table saw extension table. So yes, this might be the most versatile mobile base out there. I'll put a link to it and the accessories in the notes below this video. Heavy-duty mobile bases sometimes come with heavy-duty prices, but there is another option that just may do the job for about a third of the price. I attached these flip-up casters to the legs of my workbench a couple years ago. They're rated at 400 pounds combined and fully loaded. I bet my workbench is every ounce of that, yet it still rolls easily across the floor even over a little bit of sawdust. But don't get me wrong, these aren't all-terrain wheels. You're not going to be rolling over scraps of wood in the dog's tail. So don't be a slob. Keep your workspace clean. The only issue I have with them is that fully loaded, as they are under my big bench, they're hard to flip up and down. You have to take some of the weight off by lifting up on the bench. I use a little pry bar to avoid straining my back. 
I think if my bench was about 200 pounds, then I could work them with my foot alone, no problem. But 400 pounds is a little tough. One thing that makes the casters especially suited for workbenches is how the full weight of the bench goes back on the legs once you flip the casters up. So you don't have to worry about it moving around while you work. That's something that the first mobile base, along with the all-terrain wheels, doesn't do. And if you want to remove those flip-up casters so they stay out of the way, you can buy a set of quick-release plates. In fact, you could put a set of plates on everything in the shop you want to move around and then share a single set of casters between them. That would really stretch the shop budget. I'll put a link to the plates and the flip-up casters in the notes below this video. There are a few products on the market that promise to take the strain out of hauling sheet goods, but this one is unique because it's so compact. I thought the best place to try out the Portomeat panel carrier was at a local one-man cabinet shop. Joel's been hauling sheet goods around for years by himself, and let's face it, he's not getting any younger. So he was pretty happy to get some help. The cool thing about this cart is you can pull it right up to the back of the truck and slide the panel off on top of it. Then the top tilts downward, putting the panel on edge. In this position, the whole thing, cart and all, can roll right through a standard 30-inch doorway if you need it to. Joel has a big overhead door, so he went right from the truck to the saw to make his first cut. The height of the cart is adjustable, so you can use it as an infeed table. That means you're going from truck to saw and breaking the panel down to smaller manageable parts without ever lifting the entire heavy sheet. My only complaint is that it takes a little practice to maneuver it around. Here's a tip. If it's bumpy terrain like we were dealing with, just lift up on the front wheel a little bit. That also makes it easy to turn the cart. Took a couple of tries to get the hang of it, but Joel was working it like a pro in no time. The best part is you can fold it flat and store it away easily. You can even throw it in the back of the truck and take it right to the lumber yard if you want. Fortunately, I got two of them. One for me and one for Joel. That brings us to our bargain tool of the month. It's a laser thermometer. I've had one of these for years and I can't believe how handy they are. Most recently, I used it to measure heat buildup on a Forstner bit test I was doing. I've used it to find cold spots around windows, to find drafts in corners of house, the house so that I can identify and eliminate them. My wife even used it in the kitchen for whatever goes on in there, I have no idea. It's good anytime you need to check the surface temperature of anything. Plus, you feel like you got that laser gun you always wanted when you were a kid. I've had mine for years and I don't remember where I got it, but I found a couple of inexpensive ones that get excellent reviews on Amazon, so I'm going to link to those in the notes below this video. That wraps things up for this edition of Cool Tools. Be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal for all sorts of woodworking tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker. You can read and subscribe for free at StumpyNubs.com. See you next time.